Chuck it. Uh, is it better? Uh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I can't even hear y'all. This is awful. <laughs> Everyone on the stream, thank you for your patience. I appreciate it. I still can't hear y'all. Oh. Oh. Can we take a second and acknowledge the fact that the KBK oh, no, yeah, no, is back on? Oh, he's back now. Echo. Is right. it better? No, it's good. No, it's good. It's good. No, it's yeah, just, yeah. That's beautiful. All right, we're good. All right. So back to where we left off with. So how are you going to keep that balance of work, school, and cod going into cold war so for me it's all about just first of all with school just getting all that done don't procrastinate it so i'm not in a situation where i have a bunch of stuff to do in one day and i won't be able to get on and play mm -hmm. and my work schedule set up so I, I work in the mornings to like mid afternoon so it doesn't really affect my schedule at night the only thing that comes into play is school but so yeah it's just making sure to allot my time so that i actually have time to get on and play so uh, while you're at work, are there any things that you're personally doing to stay on top of your COD stuff, or are you just focused com completely solely on work? I mean, my job's pretty fast paced, so I don't mm -hmm. really have time to like yeah. actually do anything like that. But I mean, I I'm still on Twitter. I see like that's pretty much it. I just I'm mm -hmm. on Twitter, see what's going on in the group chats and stuff, but not really other than that. What do you work as? What do you work as? I I work for Amazon, so I'm just oh, okay. I'm just oh, okay. yeah. Just doing yeah, warehouse yeah. stuff. Yeah, so a lot of people, I'm sure... make a little money on the side. So a lot of people oh, yeah. Like, like I was saying, a lot of people, I'm sure, are in a similar position as you where, you know, they do go to work, they do have that job that they can't necessarily tend to Twitter all the time, but, you know, you still go on there. So what are some ways that maybe you could sit down and have, say, a set routine, like a checklist that you do so you can make sure that you get your things done for the day, before you go into work, like Call of Duty wise, like going into next year, what are some things that you would do? So, so for me, it's not as much before work; it's after work. Mm -hmm. It's just I work in the morning, so as soon as I get home, I'll get I'll get on shoot bots or something, as long as I don't have homework. And then, just honestly, for me, the biggest thing is just because it's the off season, is just to play mm -hmm. as much as possible, whatever it possibly is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just because, and like you mentioned earlier, like. I took some time off playing, so for me, it's just keeping the thumbs warm, mm -hmm. keeping the shot up and everything like that. But going into Cold War, like I said earlier, just just making sure to finish all my schoolwork and all my other responsibilities so that I actually have time to get on and play. Yeah, so I'm, I'm curious, actually. Um, so, like, a lot of AMs, at least this is how it was last year. We've had a couple people on who were, uh, competed last year. And uh, I think that the scrim schedule is more than likely actually going to be the same as last year. So it's 2 p.m., 4.30, uh, and 7. Um, like, for you at least, does that, like, work well for you? Or uh... Yeah, because, like, my work, I end at, like, 1.30 typically. Right. So it actually lines up perfectly so that, like, I can get, get off work and come straight home and get on and play. And then, right. and then because I'm on the West Coast, so for me, it's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So, like... Oh, so, so you're on the West Coast. See, that's Eastern yeah. time. That's Eastern time. So, so for me, like, I'll typically like I'll scrim as soon as I get back from work, and then by the time all the people from the East Coast get off, I can hop off and do my homework then. And then, if I have time, play some Ace or something just right. to keep playing. I mean, that's good for you because, um, I mean, like for the West Coast at least, that means scrims would be starting uh three three hours earlier, right? <clears throat> three hours yeah. earlier or later. Yeah, no, it's late. It's really yeah, for me. It's three hours. Yeah, right. Yeah, so eleven. Right. Eleven. Yep. Eleven. One. Eleven. And right. Four. Right. Eleven. Yeah. Eleven. One. And four. Right. Yep. So it's like I come back a little bit later, but because of that, like I can yeah, play. Yeah, you got extra time. As right. late as I want, pretty much. Right. No. I mean, I'm sure teams wouldn't have a problem with uh, starting later on the second one, anyways, because a lot of kids are up like up till five a.m. anyways, and and a yeah, lot exactly. of teams last year didn't even scrim at the two o'clock one, so. Um, that would you wouldn't be any different than most of the teams. So, yeah, it's super crazy. It's Sorry. definitely a hurdle to work around, but it's doable, you know. Right. Oh my goodness, Mavericks going crazy. <laughs> I don't know if y'all can hear him. Right. Yeah, he's going nuts. Um, so I kick it off next. Kind of change of topics. Heavy change of topic. Um, sure. I was kind of curious, and I've been 
thinking about this for a while. Um, we had Marco on, and I see he's been competing and about as long as you have. Um, you've been yep. competing longer because you kept on playing. Um, so what's what's the biggest thing you've noticed going from playing at MLG events to CWL events to now seeing the CDL play out? So honestly, the biggest thing for me is just like the sheer like size of the community now compared to. Uh oh. Oh, right. Robo. Ro- yeah, Ryan. 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 Oh, is it doing it again? Uh, yeah, now you're freezing. You're oh, my God. Now. I thought this would be fixed. No, you're good. I'm good you. now? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I just dropped down to a one player. Yeah, sure, but, yeah. um, but just like, I feel like back in like Ghosts and AW when I was like competing more seriously, it was like everyone kind of knew each other in the scene, I feel like. And nowadays it's like you'll play against these kids and they'll be absolute gods and you'll have no idea who they are. Mm hmm some of the time because it's just like there's, it's such a bigger community and it's so much not it's not as close knit as it used to be mm-hmm. and that's like the biggest thing i notice yeah, so, yeah i uh, remember uh, i was go gonna ahead. say i remember we had a scrim this year and i went to one of the guys that like i already knew and i was like yo what's your teammates at he was like they're not on twitter he was like i got them off instagram <laughs> See, i'm like i'm like we just lost like to instagram kids Mm, yeah, and yeah I that's crazy. Never heard of that. I was, I was yeah. like, never heard of yeah, that. It's like it's shocked. It's shocked. Yeah, no, I was, was listening to the uh, Mental and Hex podcast this morning, and he was talking about just how different it is going from esport to esport. You know, like CS:GO, the community is it's kind of like COD to that extent. You know, most esports, it is kind of like that friendship clickiness at the top level. Um, but mm-hmm. every they were talking about how even in the top one percent to separate the one percent from the one percent from the one percent of the top tier yeah. it, it all comes down to individual situations you know everybody can shoot straight everybody can pretty much play the same game but it all comes down to like your character and who you are as a person and your personality and stuff like that but like you're saying uh the community is so much bigger now and it almost makes the importance of that just so much greater now with you know it's so yeah. hard to find people to play with to begin with but to keep that same group or at least just a, a community of people to constantly play with is just, you know, it's crucial at this point. Yeah. So um, what are some ways that you can work on networking personally for yourself that you see yourself lacking behind that you think is, you know, maybe holding you back in that regard? So for me, honestly, like, I just don't tweet as much as I used to anymore. I don't I don't engage with people as much as I used to. And like that's one of the most important things. Like I, I think you all can speak for it. Like mm-hmm. I've met some of my best friends in this community just through like tweeting and like playing against them, and then you tweet them afterwards, then you just build a relationship from there. And that's one thing I've definitely been lacking. Mm-hmm. And just in general, just like tweeting about what's going on in the community and just like the pro scene and everything like that, it just it it's people when you tweet people see your name it's it's beneficial you know like if if people don't see your name at all then how are they going to know who you are you know Mm -hmm. yeah i think especially this day and age like i mean you guys were talking about how the culture of really cod has shifted and i think now more than ever like back when i started playing like i mean we all played around here i'm pretty sure but like in bo3 um aw even in iw like you could get away with like coming up and because like at least i struggle with this i personally like i was worried like by hitting up people that i would be kind of looked as like a dick rider do you know what i mean and mm-hmm. kind of yeah. like it's, i suffered a lot with my connections because of that because i had so many opportunities to play with big names and uh things like that and i you know i did have a shot i just like never wanted to go on that because like i was worried they'd say no and then like not respond yeah. and then, you know later down the line they'd have all these impressions of me but i think now it's such a like it's so much more of a business where it's just like you can't yeah. even like you can't even have that type of pride anymore you just kind of have to go out of your way and just ask to play now i mean obviously there's a fine exactly. line between you know asking people to play and oh yeah <laughs> getting a, you know getting a bit yeah but i mean you know that's common sense at that point mm-hmm. it, exactly like not go good but like yeah if, if you exactly if you hit someone up to play and like you're good then obviously it's going to go well for you you know what i mean yeah yeah no I mean, I, so, yeah sometimes I, sometimes it can be a bit more tricky like when when it comes well, to definitely. that, these connections and stuff like that. I mean, I, obviously, I knew that's what you implied, but it's like, uh, I don't know. It's it's definitely weird. Back 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 in 2015, 2016. I mean, the, the connect like connecting with others was completely different. It's like 
community is not only like multiply like crazy it's just like it's a whole new at- atmosphere like so. mm-hmm. definitely yeah and the amount of like small little clicks that have developed like especially in the snd community i know Liam, yeah. you could probably talk a bit about this but like the amount of like small groups that would just stick together and play tournaments together and they wouldn't go outside of that group and mm-hmm. it would work because i mean they would win they had no reason to um, right yeah so i think that's neat but i feel like we slowly see more and more not as successful groups form like i think now everybody's like oh i want to be in a group so i'm gonna go make my own and then it's these kids who get stuck in that circle and they never branch out because they're just hoping that one day that that circle alone will find success exactly I, but on that uh, front like having a circle like that is so important though because it's just if you have a, a group of people that are always down to play and always ready to play with you then it's it's you're not going to get better if you don't play a game so and conversely like the more you play the game the better you're going to get so yeah. it's yeah, and that's why I kind of like that, uh, like the little eights group we had going yesterday. Like, I felt like those guys, I felt like we could make a group chat with just like the eight to 10 of us in there, and we mm-hmm. could just message and I'd be like, all right, look, we'll get on for eights at whatever time, and we go play it um, for however long. Like, I think yesterday mm-hmm. we played, we played eights for like mm, three or four hours, and we played Among Us for like another like two or three. Mm-hmm. Like, we were on a long time yesterday. See, yeah. and those are some of the best times I've ever had, like in Call of Duty. It's just when you have a group like that and you're constantly like whether you're playing ace but also afterwards like like an aw like my squad we played like paintball we play like yes. michael myers we would just do whatever yeah. just to play together and it's just like it's just so cool being a part of like another like smaller community within the large community that we have yeah that's one of my favorite things about this cod thing and it's like you know all the times i've tried to give it up and figure some big boy thing out and still came back to it. It's just every time it's like, man, there's something <laughs> about the COD community. It's like you can go from yelling at each other neck and neck about who has more kills. And then next thing you know, you're mining diamonds together like five minutes later. It's, <laughs> it's the biggest switch that, you know, you ever find it. COD players are just so bipolar to that extent. But it's also um, that kind of brings into, oh, my God, man, all these distractions all these alarms so one of the one of the things i wanted to talk about and then kind of brings it into is um you know call of duty kind of i want to say conditions people for more um real life scenarios because obviously everything you go through builds your experience up you know if you're looking at it from video game point you're always gaining xp but um what ways do you find that call of duty specifically has elevated your real life because i know i was talking about it with you personally there's a couple yeah. things that definitely do uh definitely do mm-hmm. happen so so one of the biggest things i will say is that like it helps you deal with like other people better and, and like and also i think another thing is it teaches you how to like act professionally like, specifically if you're trying to actually compete like because you need to think about how you present yourself and how like you don't want to be a, a dickhead to some people just because because like, like they're gonna go away thinking you're a dickhead and they're not gonna want to play with you and it's and it's just like it really does accentuate like personal relationships outside of Call of Duty, but also like for example like if you have a team and like you want to leave it's all about like you want to do that in the most professional way possible mm-hmm. so that one you don't screw over the other the other teammates but two it's just you want to you don't want anyone to think negative negatively of you and that's and that transfers from call of duty to the real world as well Mm -hmm. so i want to see how colby can respond to that one directly (laughs) because uh it's quite some timing there was some certain part you want me to respond to um just kind of like the uh the professional side of things when it comes to leaving the team because you know, uh, we had a little incident. For anyone that's watching that doesn't know, I'm going to give us a little bit of backstory. So like I said, Ryan was my first ever teammate. He quit, I quit for a couple years, whatever. We came back. Trying to get back into Modern Warfare. I said, yo, Ryan, let's team, man. Colby, I had been egoing for years. He was just like one of my Twitter fanboys. I'm like, fuck it, I'm going to give him a shot. Let's play Call of Duty. <laughs> this kid's better than me. I'm like, god damn, bro. I'm going to ego with this kid forever. We're playing. We get two more, Chaz and someone else. And, you know, we're we're getting our stuff going. We get shit on. We're going into next year. We're like, fuck, bro. We all want teams to go into next year, but we can't find anyone. So we're like, fuck it. Let's let's try to team. 
three of us found a fourth. Let's do it. We had a fourth. We had an org lined up and everything. And then Colby, take it from here, man. Take it from here. <laughs> so we hadn't. We uh, we were in the talks of about a sign with an organization, and it wasn't a done deal. I don't deal care yet. about that part. And yeah, really I know, I'm getting there. I'm I getting know, there. Know. Okay. <laughs> and I got reached out. Um, by a guy who's on a team that has had a lot of success or had a lot of success in World War II and Black Ops 4. And since I wasn't signed under anything, I told him if he could offer me something better, um, I'd be interested. Oh, I lost Ryan. And I'd like... Keep going, though. Uh-oh. Keep going. Uh, I liked the offer I got, and so I jumped on it. However, I chose... I texted i kind of felt like on the team we were gonna have i felt like i was kind of in a captain role um like i would individually text people meeting times and all that stuff so i was gonna try and get everybody together for a meeting and because i was gonna explain to them the situation which was i got a better offer and i was gonna take it and i'm i was willing to help uh find a new fourth which i still did (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> basically um me and ryan were talking one night and i explained it to or the night that we were supposed to have that meeting and i explained yeah. it to him and ryan kind of went ballistic on me <laughs> he told in like Josh, the nicest way possible <laughs> yeah yeah ryan could never have a butterfly i could have said way worse things. <laughs> yeah uh so basically i um as we say in the COD community, I sketched on them for a better offer. Um, I feel like, though, and this is what I told John, I felt like I took the best possible approach to it. Aside from maybe I probably should have just waited to tell you guys instead of texting right individually. But I feel like we see a bad habit. I feel like we COD players have nowadays is if they get a if they want to leave or if they're going to go to a different team, they'll just go to their team completely. They won't even give them a heads up or anything. Um and I try and not do that because, again, just holding a level of professionalism. Like, some people do just stop going to, like, stop showing up to work. Like, I had a friend that did that. But it's yeah. more, it's the more professional route to, like, give your two weeks notice and still work your last two weeks. Um, and, like, that's kind of what I was trying to deal. And then, I mean, shit happens. Chaos struck. And now here we are. And John's trying to... yeah bait a little drama into the podcast I'm and I <laughs> onto it. so yeah. so I'm now i gotta ask that. ryan so obviously you had quite the mm-hmm. uh the reaction so i want to hear directly what you had to say in response to colby you know we're having a little drama flash on here but also well what hold on let me finish this but also oh what yeah. could you have done differently now that you're looking back on it in the future so let's Good hear question. what you what you I have mean, to I say i gotta look exactly I gotta look exactly what I said. I mean, the one thing is, I definitely I tweeted about it. Shouldn't have tweeted about it. Shouldn't Straight have. Straight away, dude. Took, been... took like thirty <laughs> seconds for it to pop up my timeline, dude. But yeah, but more more so than that, it wasn't as much about like the tweet. It was like when people responded to the tweet mm-hmm. saying like, "Yo, what's going on?" and I answered them. That was probably what I should not have done. But um. Other than that, I wouldn't say so, but I, I just want to talk about, like, the whole situation because, mm-hmm. honestly, like, you know, I was not happy that day, but, like, after, like, an hour of, like, I was at work, so, like, I was working for an hour, got to take my anger out on some of those boxes, <laughs> but um, but I think about it, and that's, like, one of the things I've always said is that, like, the biggest mistake that amateurs make in the community are, right. like, we we're, were talking about it earlier, how they, they get a group, and they don't branch out from that group. They play with the same mm-hmm. kids and all they do is just grind with that same group, but they don't ever look for different or better kids to play with that would fit them more better. So it's like, that's one of the most important things you can do. And it's like, it's really how you climb the ladder in the community. Mm-hmm. So it's like, once I thought about that, I was like, all right, like, like I understand. And like, I, like I told John, like when I texted him about it, I was just like, I, I respect the decision because at the end of the day, like, What's best for you is what's best for you. Mm-hmm. It was just like for me, going through the entire process up until we're literally like we were supposed to have signed like a week before this happened. <laughs> so it was like mm-hmm. for me, like if you weren't confident with this team, you should have just 
said so from the beginning or not even done it, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. but that's but that's also not a way you can't think of it that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause yeah. for all I know, just because I don't have confidence in a team, I end up not having a team for the first couple two Ks. And that kind of yeah. puts me in a shitty position. Um which is why I was so quick to jump on it. But that's also why at the same time I was so open to other offers. Um, and I guess on John, I know John understood this and I know Liam will, cause I know Liam definitely understands this concept, but just the way our community is, is the way you make it. If you really want it, you gotta, you get on a team, you play well. Once you're too good for that team, move on to the next, I'm not saying I'm too good for you guys, but in theory, you basically yeah. just you keep on working your way up on these better and better teams. Um, no, you're right. So when you get this offer, that's a team that has found a lot of success over the past couple of years. Um, like, gotta take it. Yeah, no, yeah, I agree a hundred percent. And like I was saying earlier, you know, the how like they're saying on the podcast, it's like the top one percent of people are really all kind of in the same category, skill wise. You know, everyone kind of plays the same to that degree with very minor. Um, differences i don't know why this is true hold on um oh, so there's no for anybody watching the podcast there's no hard feelings right now yeah no, no for sure all. all good vibes um it's, it's more bro, well, that's what we want though Come on, guys, <laughs> yeah. you guys just start throwing hands man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i was, trying, content, to, I was man. trying to poke the bear a little Ricky, bit Ricky like, monitors <laughs> set it up Honestly, let's just get Ryan back on the let's get Ryan back on the podcast when we scrim and I shoot his body. I want to use that. For, <laughs> use that as a storyline yeah, trailer. <laughs> right now, but um, oh, that... fuck, what was like I forget what I was getting ready to say. Um, but like, uh, like a... oh, oh, the top one percent. You know, it, it's all kind of the same players. So when you are at kind of a <laughs> skill point where there are players that are a good bit better than you and also players that are a good bit worse than you you're kind of like in that middle echelon of players you are yes. kind of forced in that position that you do have to climb the ranks more than other positions when you are kind of at the entry level position you don't have offers you have to take what you have you have to make any connection you possibly can and play with absolutely anyone you can just to play at all yep. you can't be picky and choosy at first so you know when you're first picking the sticks back up or first up in general you know like i was saying you have to pick those teammates you have to just run with it but when you do kind of start to get those offers and you are in that middle echelon like i said like colby or all of us or whatever like i said i respected and understood the decision and i saw it come from yeah, a mile cool. away that colby was going to get an offer and you know, no. go somewhere <laughs> i was like I, I was saying earlier i was like look bro the way this roster is lined up i was like talking about a contract fucking contract and i was like colby ryan sent me that text and i was like bro i knew this was happening I, and i was like I there's no way we're not signing this contract and i didn't want to because it's like you know we haven't even played the game together I understand that you yeah. know we're always yeah. going to be able to find someone i always thought it was I know, a little bit stupid but i think i think some Liam more has something to say next <laughs> yeah but keep going, no, no, I, keep going no no actually colby you keep going i have a yeah, question no. for all of y'all yeah no, for sure all right so i was gonna say real quick i'm not gonna expose the shirt certain parts of the contract because i don't think i'm technically supposed to yeah, um, no. but i know with the way this certain contract was it would have been it would have been going through hell to trying to get out of it more than likely um yep and so it's one of those things where it's like say do you get a say i would have gotten an offer like later on after we had already signed it would have been i kind of been stuck and it would have been like okay well i have to wait up this x X amount of however long was left. Um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's personally why I also, that's why I don't like signing. Like, we're what, seven weeks out from that's what I, the yeah. game even drops, and you're going to sign a contract which may or may not have a period where your timer's not even counting down. Like, that's just. That's why I said. I like, that's that, a little that, bit bogey. Yeah. That that's how you, that's how you take a six month contract and it extends to really like a nine or ten month contract. Um, right, so, yep. so, so what I was gonna say was, um, this goes out to all the players, all the orgs. Um, what I'm, I think there's a big problem with signing contracts in the AMC because orgs expect the AMs to sign contracts. And let me tell you, 
the only people who should be signing or the contracts and orgs are underage people because that's the only motherfuckers that can actually get out of them all right because i'm telling you right now you'll get trapped you'll get screwed and i promise you it's happened to so many people i know that you'll be stuck in there and miss a pro league spot that is what will happen you will be stuck in that org that org will keep you for ransom and you will lose a chance do not sign it. I don't care how much money they're giving you. It's not as much as you'll make in the pro league. I do not care. I'm telling you, I don't care if they give you a fucking mansion out for one week in Florida. Just don't do it. Okay. Get an org with good branding that can represent yourself. Go in there, take over the challengers league, and then go get your pro spot. Don't do any of that salary bullshit. I'm telling you, you guys are going to trap yourself out. It's not worth it. So that that's my opinion on that. I'm telling you, the only time I even ever signed a tra contract, a contract was when I was 16. Do you know what I mean? And I made bank off of it because mm -hmm. I was getting money and I could leave whenever I wanted to. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. they're dumb yeah. and I didn't legally have to oblige yeah. to it. So I'm telling you right now, it's not worth it. So since you've experienced that, why don't you elaborate on that, that story? Why don't you tell us what happened there, how that like deep depth, whatever you can talk about legally. Uh, well, I mean, like I said, I was underage, so I can technically say everything. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to okay. say everything because I don't yeah. want to put anybody on blast, I'm but sad. I was with the orgs for a little while as an underager, and I was getting paid to stream. And for six months, I was getting paid to stream. Mm. Um, and I was getting, I was sponsored and for a bunch of different things. And it was around the time when I was quitting COD, not like, not quitting, but like taking a break. Do you know what I mean? And I was getting money put in and I told them right away, Hey, look, I told him my position. Like I wasn't scumming him. Like I was being honest. Like I was like, I'm not going to take off the contract because I don't know what I'm doing yet. And um, it wasn't like a complete lie because the entire time when I wasn't playing COD, I could have, I literally could have came back any minute. Like it wasn't like a, okay, I'm stopping till this point. Right. So I told the guy and I told him up front, like, Hey, look, I can't stream right now. I have a lot of stuff going on. I'm taking a break from COD. And he's like, all right, that's good. He was fully supportive with me trying to keep me onto his roster because he knew I had a lot of like networking and a lot of value to his org. And he kept me in there for six months of me getting paid. I, he knew my situation. I didn't give him a deadline of when I was coming back because I didn't know. And it took him, me, him six months for him to just like I'd be like, okay, I'm done. And I got paid that entire time, and I got sponsorship like bonuses and everything like that. And all that work did was waste time, you know. And and I and I yeah. told them. And um, I've had friends, so I'm also not going to say. And there's also people in the pro league right now who's this happened to, um, and they've lost chances at going pro because orgs have literally held them by the neck. Um, I'll say this one because honestly, I don't have any respect for a lot of people up there. Um, actually, not. I'm gonna hold my thumb. I'm not gonna say that. That might, <laughs> yeah, that yeah. might fuck me if I keep going. Yeah. That might fuck me if I keep yeah. going. But there is that. There is there. Are, there are orgs that I'll tell you guys off stream mm -hmm. that yeah. are the scummiest of the scummiest. I could tell you a million different stories, um, and have ruined people's chances at going oh, pro. So yeah, um, be careful. Ryan, have you ran into is... any scummy situations with orgs throughout your days at all? Yes, I have. Mm, rub those hands I and tell me that know, story, baby. I don't. I don't know how much I can go into yeah, it. Yeah, no, obviously. It's very specifically, touchy. so I was under an organization for it was UMG DC. So. Uh, uh, by the way. Yes. Uh, so I think yeah, Kobe knows. So huh? it was UMG DC, and so this organization they had two teams. That they sent to MES, the, like the week or two or three or whatever, right before DC was going to happen. And what ended up happening is, I guess those teams didn't place as well as the org owner wanted them to. Mm -hmm. So he just decided to say screw it, and he dropped both those teams. And then my buddy, who we were, we were just gonna originally we were going to the event just just for fun because it was close to all of us, and just because like at that point this was in um what was this? This was AW. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this was kind of like. NWW. Yeah. So we were kind of just going just because it was close. And I mean, I competed, but these guys weren't like, they're, they're my guys, but like one of them was a streamer for this organization. And that's why we got the spot. Mm -hmm. So we get to the event and like, for whatever reason, the community is very unhappy that those two other teams got dropped and just were riding like, oh, who are these kids? Like, why are they under this org? Blah, 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 blah. And we get a call, like, this guy, he got us jerseys, he had G Fuel and everything sent, like, we were, like, we almost signed a contract for this, I think, but not actually, because it was just one event, and then we get a call from him, and it's like, yeah, um, you aren't under this org for the event, we're like, what? What are you, what are you saying? Yeah. And he tried to go and claim that they didn't actually send us, and that we were just pretending, and we get, and, and it was the weirdest situation I've ever been a part of, 
He tried to say that you guys weren't actually his team, but well, he I don't didn't know, they, you they, out there. Yes. Yes, exactly. So he's it just was, taking two L's. It makes no sense to me. So, huh. Yeah, I, I, yeah he I just didn't want to tarnish his brand or something at that point. I don't know what's going through that. Yeah. And then this same org, my buddy that was a streamer, he stayed with them after this for some reason. Mm -hmm. And this may give away the organization, but I'm not going to say it. Okay. Is they decided to get a team house. And this fool essentially, like, trapped them to live in this house and, like, wouldn't let him move out for, like, months. And they... It, yeah. Wow. It was... That is no It was good. crazy. That's crazy like shit, man. That's shit gone wrong, bro. See, that, that's one of those things where it's like, you know, what is it... You know, Optic, it was so organic. There were no true legalities to it. Um, you know, Hex has been very open with that. Is that what made it so easy for Optic? And that's why all these other orgs are failing when they try to recreate that with the team house atmosphere? Or do you see any other team houses I mean, kind of pulling it off? I don't see anyone pulling it off, really. But I would definitely say, like, I think that plays a part, but this specific instance, yeah, I think no, it was, sure. has more to do with the particular org owner, mm, yeah. who is just an absolute scumbag. <clears throat> yeah. I, yeah. My my thing with that is, um, I think Optic, although, I mean, I, I, we, I actually talked to Ryan and Cole before you joined uh, John, a little bit before uh, the podcast started. I was talking about how, um, a little bit about why I think Optic was probably the best organization without a doubt in like the esports um mm -hmm. scene and just hex in general was just like phenomenal like oh, yeah. no one compares to him no. like it's not even Class close act. like he's a professional and a lot of these guys a lot of these people who want to get into esports are people with money and no experience i mean i bet they didn't even play sports like it's like they're just business people who made a lot of bank yes. realized esports is somewhere where they can grow and invest in and then just mishandle it i mean Look at what's happening with Brack. Do you know what I mean? Yes, bro. I yeah. wanted to touch like, on that. that. Dude, Brack's situation isn't even like... I, I, I don't know it very well, but I'm telling you, people have gone messed up harder, and his situation is still bad, and his org, Tor uh, Toronto Ultra, is still handling it horribly. Do you know what I mean? I mean, like, it's it just messed up what they're doing to him. Do you know what I mean? And there's That's people... Crazy. That it's been happening like this forever, and it's just always people who are just unprofessional. They don't know how to handle anything. And... uh. A lot of these orgs really don't know what they're doing. A lot, another good org actually is United. United really knew how to handle things. Mm -hmm. I hope they get back in the pro soon. So, so obviously there are the organizations that have a hard time being professional, and the players, you know, it, it's fifty fifty. You see the couple professional people, the couple that aren't. But do you think that? Uh, how do I word this? Because you know, I I have a couple ways I want to take this, but um like the professionalism of your brand could possibly I don't want to say jeopardize but ruin some opportunities for you in a sense that like optic they were very organic they were very themselves they were very like open ended they did kind of clean things up you know here and there they you know yeah. hex had his his stuff he was professional with them but it wasn't like um a necessarily like sit down scripted video where like a you know things like that where they were handed like i said a script and things were very like methodically thought out like i said um if i were to sit down and create a youtube channel and i wouldn't say a single cuss word i wouldn't smirk a single smile i would just be super straight up and tell you guys how to put a control freak on a controller do you think something <laughs> like that could like say jeopardize a brand or do you think that y you could never be too professional i um, oh, Ryan, go first. I was gonna say like I, I in the sense of like i don't think i'd say like being too professional is ever a bad thing but in order to like build your brand you got to have a certain level of personality i feel like mm -hmm. and it really just depends on who you're trying to reach and who your target audience is because like for example like if i was a fortnite player like and i wanted a bunch of like middle school kids to watch me then obviously i'm not going to be i'm going to be as professional as possible i'm not going to i'm not going to curse i'm going to be as good as i can but like in call of duty i think it's a little bit different you can afford to be a little bit more brash because well like you said earlier john but call of duty players are bipolar we're we're hotheads we're 
where there's a certain type of demographic that plays this game. Mm-hmm. So I think, so I, I don't say that like being professional can hurt you, but definitely like you don't want to be too bland. You know what I mean? Okay. Liam Coley, what are you guys saying about that? Have you guys ever experienced any of this? Um, uh, experience like in what kind of way? In any way that someone like was like the... um telling you that they you're either being too corny or that you're being too um rambunctious, you need to clean it up. You know, you, it goes either way. Have, have you dealt with this? I think you guys can predict what name I'm about to say. Um, <laughs> uh, Marco told me. Marco would get on me anytime. For those of you who don't know, Marco Remo, uh, I've known him for four years. He's kind of, he's kind of my mentor uh, with this whole COD thing. And so he, anytime, because like when you're a fourteen year old, you kind of, you kind of want the attention. So if you have like a bad day, you'll black out your Twitter. You'll, you'll tweet some depressing stuff, and like he'd text me and be like, "Fix your, fix your Hattie and Abby." I'm like, "Why?" I'm like, I'm like, I can make it whatever I want. He's like, because it looks bad for you. I'm like, yeah. okay. And then I wouldn't listen to him. But now, like, it makes a lot more sense. Um, because like you, know, like I'll go to, or I'll put, I'll put my take on the original question that Ryan answered. I think there's definitely a minimum level of professionalism everybody needs to have. Yes, mm-hmm. for sure. I think yeah. I think whether you go above that or not is up to you. I think, for example, you take somebody like Methods. He has that minimum level, and he's but, uh, other, other than cool. that, he's dude, he's just having fun with it. Mm-hmm. Yes, I, um, I think Methods definitely has a good balance. I think that was a perfect example. Um, but yeah, so I think Marco, in terms of experiencing it, Marco definitely gets mm-hmm. on me a lot about it. I've gotten a lot better about it. Um, I started doing the small things, tweeting good morning, good night, people are responding. Like people are being more active. I've noticed people are a lot more active when they can engage with something. So mm-hmm. when you're sitting there talking about how bad your day was, nobody's yeah. really going to respond because they can't relate. But if you're sitting there saying good morning, like telling people have a great day, uh, I've noticed people are a lot more active and that means more interactions on your profile. It's more people looking at you, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, no, I agree with that a hundred percent. And that's something I actually wanted to make a video about later on is like specifically call of duty like growing tactics uh when it comes to like twitter and the tweets and kind of like i want to say guidelines or um i i yeah i guess guidelines probably just a good word for like the things that you should be tweeting what are i want to hear three things that each of you guys think that you oh should gosh. hit that obviously i don't want to hear any repeats fuck repeats so you got to come up with something wait, on the fly if it gets can, repeated three as in what it's going to be it's question. going to be three things, okay? That you guys think that should be done every day, if not every day, every week to grow your brand when it comes to just Twitter tactics. So I want to start with Ryan and then we're going right. to go down to First Colby step. and oh, then gotcha. Liam. Wait, 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 wait. I have a story. I have a story real okay, quick that well, I Colby. I could explain about professionalism okay. before we start this question. I'm sorry, I have to interrupt. Okay. So some people may have seen me uh tweet about this. There was a organization owner who has it. Oh it's my the, god! It's his organization's brand. Did I send you the tweet, Ryan? Or did you see this? I saw it. Yeah. Oh my gosh, dude! He has his oh organization. <laughs> oh my gosh! He has his organization <laughs> brand all over. It's in his name. It's in his Twitter handle. It's in his bio. His header has it. It's everywhere on his profile. This guy tweeted oh, the most ridiculous thing. Like, and I was telling people, I was like, on a personal account. Go ahead. I don't care. This is your branded account that has your brand on it, your organization's brand on it. And that organization carries these players. So you're also representing these players with that kind of tweet. So that was my little shenanigan. So go ahead, Ryan. So can I say things not to do along with it? Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Three things okay. not to do. So one, oh, not, So one thing I will say to do is – this is more during the season, but it's like if you play somebody and you have a good scrim, message them, tweet them. Mm. God damn it! Because about- you never know where that. Because <laughs> you never know when that connection is going to come to benefit you. It left me to dry. <laughs> Dude, right? Dude, I'm- on the opposite of that is like if you absolutely like dookie on kids, 
don't be an asshole like tweet him gg like at the end of the day like who knows a year from now these kids might end up being better than you like you might need that connection as well then the other thing i mean you kind of mentioned it's just like i would say just all about just tweet every day just tweet as much as you possibly can engage in the community talk about stuff that's going on in the pro scene just to like just just be involved in that conversation you know Mm -hmm. okay obi what do you think Oh yeah, screw me, remember. I already forgot what Ryan said. Okay, so uh, Ryan so said. Talk, so t- Ryan said talking to kids after scrims, mm-hmm. whether it's good or bad. Yes. What was the second thing? The second well, thing. It was the same thing. Yeah. It was, it was, so what was good? What was joint, bad? Yeah, it's kind of okay, like a so joint. So. Thing. Yeah, and then the other one was just tweet about what goes on in the community. Oh gosh, I would say this might kind of go off tweet about what's going on in the community. I would say interact with everybody. Um, I think we can all agree. Like when we were underage, I always hated people who mass followed. And now Mm -hmm. I almost find myself doing that in a way, not to the extent where I follow a bunch of people and unfollow them, but I'll follow people. And if they follow me back, like I'll start interacting with them. Um, like even strives, like I literally met strive yesterday and I was chilling in a stream before this podcast talking to them. Um, so I would say interact with people. Um, yeah, three a person's kind of a lot. I would say I got this down. Y'all haven't said nothing. Uh, Liam's sitting here fine. <laughs> Ooh. I would say this, this one's not gonna mess up Liam. Um, I would say also interact with um organizations. Um, like there's a couple, there's a couple organizations where like, I'll go to like DM them, like blah, 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 blah. Um, and then I'll realize like, I had talked to them like three, four years ago. I'm like, oh wow. If I would have kept this connection up until now, it had been a lot stronger and probably been a lot easier, for example, to get underneath them. Third thing, um, I'll say, I'll say a bad thing. I'll say, keep your keep your emotions off twitter um oh gosh i lost audio oh no not this again i keep on talking Uh, so uh keep your emotions off twitter in the sense of like yes you may have a bad day and i know some people really do go through some stuff like we literally saw a guy who his girlfriend of it was like six years cheated on him with his best friend awful yeah um and stuff like that like i'm not saying it's excusable but like that stuff is I can yeah, I can understand yeah, that yeah. stuff, but like, but, but like you had ten dollars stolen. Like, if I see it on my timeline, I'm gonna be like, okay, well, this kid isn't professional, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and like I, I've told somebody before. I don't know if he's in here, but if Kevin's in here, like I've told him before. I was like, I had like DM them. I was like, hey, delete all your sad tweets of the past three days. Like nobody's nobody wants to look at that. It's gonna make you lose followers if you're just gonna be sad all the time. I was like, I was like, if you're tweeting it out, hoping that somebody's going to respond to you, most of the time they're not. I was like, my DMs are always open. Mm -hmm. If you have to talk to somebody, like I would say, reach out to somebody, not reach out to the public. Hundred percent. All right, Liam, let's hear what you've been plotting on. On. All right. Well, um, these are just kind of things that I thought about, like kind of like a while back. So some of these are recent. Actually, most of these are recent. Um, well, the first one, which is kind of like the most like obvious of them all, um for me personally, would be that, um, God, oh, right, okay, so take clips off of things that you've done in stream or on video or anything you do, you just post them, like, because they're things that are relatable, and, like, you could be, like, just, like, you know, the middle of the crop, right, but then get a really cool, like, three-piece, like, an s d or some shit, right, like that, right, and then you'll have, like, two or three people, like, respond to me, like, damn, bro, you're nasty, oh, you're the goat, like, do you know what I mean, like, Obviously, like they're just like nice comments, but it's just like stuff to get interactive with, or even like a funny clip from Among Us because something like that can blow up. You know what I mean? Literally, last night, dude. (laughs) I'm telling you, I'm telling you, any anything like that, like seriously, that cracks people up. Like I posted videos of just like funny stuff that like cockies can't even relate to. With like, I posted a video of like Steph Curry like slipping and then airballing a three back to back, and that got like like i think like 50 retweets and like 300 likes do you know what i mean mm-hmm. and i don't i don't even know how many views right and that still brings in people to your mm-hmm. account because most of the people retweeting it are kids right mm-hmm. that's my first thing 
Um, my second one would be, um, even if it doesn't seem probable, I'm not kidding. DM pros, mm-hmm. like John, like what you've been doing with tweeting at pros. Good job. I'm so serious. I guarantee you all of them have seen it. I'm not kidding. Okay. They still see stuff. Do you know what I mean? They have a verified tab and they don't have a verified tab. If there's a pro who's not verified, I better see you tweeting them. I'm serious. Or just send them a DM. Now, don't do it like excessively. Yeah, yeah, I know like, what you mean. There's a balance. There's an art to it. There. There's a balance. Yeah, exactly. There's an art to it. Um, that like really helps. Um, Cause like it gets your name in their head and they're mm-hmm. familiar with you. So now mm-hmm. if you go later in a tournament and you like do really good against them, you're like, oh man, maybe I should go on that guy's podcast. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm serious. That stuff uh, adds up. Yeah. That's exactly what, what I try to do with this whole stuff. And that's right, one of the exactly. things why I try to push people to create that kind of content because you know it, and like you were saying with the clipping and putting it on Twitter, that's something that I personally don't do. And it's something I used to do. And it's one of the reasons why I got the followers that I got in the first place is because people would see my gameplay. They'd be like, oh shit this kid's nice or whatever leave a couple comments a couple people would see those comments and they would be like oh well if john graceless is getting responded to by x x and x i want to be responded to right. by x x and x right. so i'm going to associate with john yeah. graceless so then people would associate with me and then it's like i'm just a hub for yeah, people to want to get off. Exactly. connections off of so it's right, like exactly. that's what i'm trying to push people in the community to do not necessarily like i said make yourself like a hub but i mean it's like that's just you gotta put yourself in a position to get so, lucky and my my third one yeah my third one is uh group chats so serious group chats are huge like um in twitter and group chats like whether it's like an eights lobby or an snd circle or scrim chats yeah. anything like that please networking. do that i'm serious that is networking well you don't even realize it i'm serious like if you get to play with people like let's say one of your buddies is real good friends with like the, these two people and you get lucky enough to hop an attorney mm-hmm. ask him to hop you in a group chat because now you're dming him like inadvertently, do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, which can lead to Twitter follow, anything like that. And uh, this kind of like tags a little along off of Twitter, but um, it's similar. Getting people's team speaks. Do you know what I mean? There's yeah. pl- like I'm telling you, like you could be the worst person in that server, but have the team speak. Like I used to have Ilya's team speak for S and D, and that got me places in S and D because I started talking to other people, right? So like that's what you guys need to do. Like not like you three, but like just people in general. Like mean. people don't do that enough, right? You know, like form group chats. It's really yeah. big. So those are my three. Uh, I just did the math, and within the past two weeks, I've gained about 100 followers um, off of networking, and I would say about half of those were from getting into these uh, AIDS groups and just following everybody there. Yeah. And then again, kind of like what I was saying, once you follow them, they follow you back, and you communicate with them. And just the way net- network, the way networking is, if they don't follow you back, you unfollow, don't, you unfollow them. Yeah. Yep. And then also on the... Uh- and the actual gameplay side of it, when you're look, we we're talking about how it's all about climbing up the ladder. Mm-hmm. Playing ace is good. You you expose yourself, your gameplay to that many more Damn, people. Plus, you get to shit. see them. Who's good? Who's not? And hey, like, oh, you're a beast. I'm a beast. Let's play together. Let's maybe team one mm-hmm. day. Like, and, it, it's and then the way ace works is almost like how this whole ladder, this whole spider web of getting to the pro league works. You play in one eights lobby. It could be with a bunch of kids who aren't so good. You do really well, then you get added to a better eights lobby, and then you do well in that one, and you get into better and better, and you slowly work your way up. And the next thing you know, you're playing with these top AMs, and um, like even now, like these top AMs and pros are playing the same eights lobbies. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, quick, quick thing. Uh, so the real scuff op said in the chat. He said, "Why does Sigma say to tweet at pros?" Uh, the reason why I said that, bro, is, and I, I don't mean like spam do this. I mean like send one or two tweets out to like just like different pros, right? Or send like a DM. And what I mean by that is like I don't mean asking to play. I mean like if you have like something like John's doing, like he has a podcast, right? And we're trying to get pros on here, right? Because that'd be really good for not just us, but it'd just be good for the AM community, right? And just one or two tweets like that, can, even if they don't respond, as long as they see it, does so much like just so, does so much good for us. Because now if John goes and cooks cooks them in a tournament, right? you're going to be like, okay, so the kid's not that bad. Like, you know, he's a good player. So they're more like lenient to coming on and you could apply that to many different aspects. So that's why I said that. I don't mean go, go out out of your way, just start spam DM and you know, yeah. scumpy about, yeah, it's yeah. like hard. Yeah, I think, yeah. You're not going to get picked up on a pro yeah. team by telling scump, Hey right. man, like you're, right. you're really cool. And I think you have a cute cat. Like, yeah, I think, yeah, I think, I think a lot of our community is also kind of intimidated by the blue check mark. I think they see, these pro like top AMs people would tweet at all the time, but then these pros because they get replies so fast, it's almost like kids get like turned away from it. But mm-hmm. there's certain pros like I really like, and John John uh, agree with this. I really like um, 
Jake from esports. Oh, bro, he interacts like, with everything. He likes my tweets instantly. Everything. Dude. He liked John's tweet where it was a screenshot of me when my hair was wet as a mullet. And he liked it. <laughs> yeah, just because he was tagged in it. And it's like, I mean, other people don't give their fan bases that kind of time of day. So I, I think that, like you were saying, that's someone that kind of does give him that upper edge into people. And it's like, you know, he's someone that's in a position where it's like, he covers so many people. He has so many people watching him. He can talk about anything, and he could pretty much... He's like the Keemstar of our generation. He could bring you on his show, talk about you, and you quite honestly could make it off of that just because of the eyes that you get onto it. So it's like having people that are that have that kind of power and that kind of control that are also as generous to like interact is something very powerful and rare. You know, In our COD community, it's easier. The community is a lot tighter and you know a little bit closer together than it's other things other industries but it, it, the same general rules apply so does anybody think yeah. that no oh shit you, you said definitely it scared me um so does anybody think that there are some ways that i want to say people that quit that are coming back in to the community can uh build a new balance because you know when you came back or you joined the first time around there's the yeah. okay i'm gonna grind like i love this video game i'm gonna grind 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 just keep playing like whatever i'm gonna go pro and then you end up burning out you quit you know in the same situ situation that the three of us are in um and then you come back around how can you build that balance so that you don't burn out that second time around in comparison to that first time because obviously things are a lot different now. So that's actually a difficult question because when you're first coming back, like what typical players will see is that like obviously your skill level is not going to be the same way it is or it was before. I mean, mm -hmm. so it's like at that point when you first come back, like in my opinion, the most important thing is to play the damn game as mm -hmm. much as possible because that's the only way you're going to get better. Like. Like, I, you see all these people, like, oh, I'm going to go on YouTube watch, like, oh, how to get a better shot, like, what's the best settings? But at the end of the yeah. day, like, none of that matters. It's mm -hmm. all about playing the game. So it, it's, it is really difficult to do that. But, like, I would want to say on the other side of that, like, it is so easy to burn out if, you, if that's all you're doing. So definitely just, like, kind of like I was saying at the beginning is, like, set time aside for Call of Duty and time aside for your life, you know? And... And try to stick to that as much as you can, because at the end of the day, like if you play too little, if you play too little, you're gonna be bad. If you play too much, you're eventually gonna burn out, and you're gonna lose friends. You're gonna lose your social life. Mm. So it's, it's, it's that is one of the hardest things that I think people deal with, with playing Call of Duty, because especially if you're trying to be up at the top level, like if if you're like a top aimer pro, like you have to be playing eight, nine hours a day just to even stay at your level that you are mm -hmm. yeah no i agree 100 percent. there definitely is a struggle trying to find that balance liam what kind of things are you going to be implementing now that you're going to be trying a little bit harder this year in comparison to last year by uh, like just like in general like or having to do with like the game itself mm, just in general like balance wise what are some things you're doing that uh, outside of the game or going to affect, like I said, your quality of life. Oh, so outside of the game. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to keep playing basketball. I'm going to keep working out. Um, maybe the biggest things I enjoy doing in life is working out and playing basketball. Um, I mean, I'm, you guys know Marco, like uh, like Big Mark. Yeah, I, I got, I'm like one of, I got like a meal plan and a workout plan okay. with him. Like I already had my own, but like I wanted to get it like kind of like more like, uh, get more serious with it, you know, so I'm working mm -hmm. with him now. How's um, that going for you? Yeah, well, I just started. Like oh, he just okay. sent me everything. Him and his buddy like sent me uh sent, sent me everything yesterday. So I'm starting tomorrow with it. Um, That's dope. It's, like, it's kind of like a quality of life improvement. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm already healthy. I'm already in shape. It's just like I want to kind of you know do something for myself. Uh, so outside of COD, I would say I would say that really just try to have things because, you know, you know as much as people want to say oh you know go and grind COD like you know, eight to twelve hours a day like it's really important to just like have a way time from cod because i know i did this for seven years straight all i did was play cod you know I'd, I'd hang out with friends sure but like 
not like as much as I do now, which is fine. Do you know what I mean? But like, I didn't do anything other, anything else other than COD. So I, you know, <laughs> it's really, it's really easy to get burnt out. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I'd do for me. Colby, what do you say? Um, I mean, personally, I've yet to really hit a point of burning out. Um, um I kind of think. I kind of think I'm like a freak of nature sometimes because of the way I am mentally. Um, so, I mean, outside of the game, I'm not too worried. I think inside of the game, just making the most of dedicated time. Um, practice time is practice time. And then VOD time is VOD time. And then individual skill work time is individual skill work time. Um, so, I mean, yeah. I mean, the main reason I would quit a bunch is just because I wouldn't get a team because I wouldn't network. And so mm. um, people didn't really know who I was. And so I always quit before I ever could burn out. But now I'm very, very determined. And like Liam saw this firsthand. And I'm sure he's known this actually since like Black Ops 3. I'm ridiculously hard on myself. Mm -hmm. And I will... I'll destroy myself mentally before anybody else ever does like you'll never win a mental game with me um but i will beat myself all the time literally just the other night with one of my new teammates we were doing uh i told him i was like yo can we get on black ops 4 like i'm gonna work on my long range shot because my mechanics have been really bad since coming back and um so we did that and i was getting smoked dude and I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm like, this is what's wrong. I'm like, my centering's off. I'm not tracking right. I'm not snapping right. I'm like, everything is just a shit show. He was like, I don't think, he was telling me, he was like, I don't think it's that deep. I was like, it is that deep. I was like, and then later on in the night, I'm like looking at the calendar. And I'm like, all right, I have seven weeks into a Cold War. I was like, my yeah. shot, my shot equivalent right now is probably at like a 30 to 40% of like its actual potential. And so I'm sitting here and I'm like planning out like times of like when my shot should hit certain points so that by the time going into Cold War, like I should be sitting around like 85, 90% of its mm -hmm. potential if I play out these next seven weeks. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, personally, I never, again, I never really had a big problem with burning <clears throat> out. It's more of, more of the mental game for me. Okay. Well, I think that's a, a good point to wrap it into round 11 if you want to take it since you've had the microphone the last couple minutes to finish it out here we're at 58 minutes and 52 seconds i don't know man do you kind of want to decide between the three of us what we should ask ryan because i feel like should we pass it off to liam this time see what liam's got on uh, the on the sleeve all right yeah I'm with it, I'm with it. okay what you got liam i'll come with it give me one second no, hold on. Uh, All right. So, uh, okay. So, I'm gonna ask. Okay. So, I I'm gonna ask you this qu uh, question, Ryan. So, we talked about uh, kind of like the out of COD, um, quality of life thing. What inside of COD are you going to do now that you didn't do in any other COD that you were gonna do to kind of take your level to the next, uh, take your game to the next level? Well, honestly, like this is gonna seem like super like self-explanatory but like back when i was playing like which is like i was playing the most in like ghost aw and bo3 like people watched vods but like not as much as people do now there's way more of an influence on an influence on vods now and that's not something i did very often I, like I, I would obviously i'd record gameplay i'd stream and i'd go back and watch it just for like me i post it on youtube but like i wouldn't like sit down and like analyze my vods like every week or every every night or whatever like it wasn't a consistent thing for me and that's definitely one thing i'm gonna i have started doing and will start to do more but more specifically in game like for me i'm i'm the biggest proponent ever of this is something i did before but just in general like i'm the biggest proponent of eights i think eights are the best thing you can do for yourself as a player when you're not obviously screaming with the team or, or anything just because it keeps you in that team mindset playing the same game but also it allows you to network at the same time so just for me like i, I just think eights are the best thing you can do as a player for yourself and so, i'm going to uh, continue to do that yeah that's good 
Yeah, no, I agree a hundred percent. And I think you had some good things to talk about. Thank you again, Ryan, so much for coming on, man. Is there anything else that you have oh, to say heading out? No, I no. think no. you guys covered it. Thanks for having me on. Of course, man. Yeah, I hope you have a good later. Have a great rest of your day, boys. Everyone watching, you too, stay boys. safe. Peace. Where is the streaming button? All right.